Hello everyone, uh, and uh, my name is Jean-Philippe Odeus, and uh, I'm Senior Program Manager at the Managing Authority of the Interreg EMR program. And um, I want to welcome you today and thank you for joining this uh, communication workshop. Um, today we decided to organize a communication workshop um, because it is an important part um, of uh, the activities and the implementation of a program. Um, and uh, we also want to give this a, an important place um, because it helps also to put forward the achievements uh, that you are uh, doing with, uh, uh, within the projects that you are running. And uh, it's important, uh, we think, that uh, the inhabitants of uh, our region are informed about uh, these uh, very successful and uh, uh, nice um, achievements uh, and, and progress uh, that we reach with um, this Interreg projects and also the benefit that it's for them. Um, additionally, also, we think that it is important to um, highlight um, the support of the European Union, uh, because we all know that uh, uh, sometimes uh, the, the added value of the Union is questioned and uh, of course here with this uh, support uh, we also want to show that uh, it can also help to make the difference for the citizens and it's not just only about um, some administrative burden or uh, complex political uh, discussions. So th this is then very important and we can reach these objectives um, by having an efficient communication uh, approach. And um, we already had discussions with you. Uh, we already have uh, proposed some guidance uh, to support you in this process. Um, but then today, um, we also wanted to go a step further, um, also based on the feedback we received from you, uh, telling us that um, you uh, would very welcome um, additional tools from us to help you in this uh, communication steps um, and that's what we will present um, um, to you. Um, additionally to the handbook that you already know, um, the colleagues have been working in the last months to further improve um, elements and, and come up with uh, very practical tools um, that can help you. Um, and um, also today um, the colleagues will give you some tips and tricks um, that, that will uh, certainly uh, help you um, in implementing your communication steps. Um, after today, so we will, it will all be presented here um, during this, this workshop in the broadcast, uh, but um, if you have the feeling that you have missed something, um, do not be afraid, uh, all the material and also the recording will be uh, made available on our website so that you can always consult this um, afterwards. Um, my colleagues uh, Tana and Isabel will uh, guide you through um, these, um, these, all these different elements, show you also the tools that have been developed and um, we also will um, answer uh, the questions that you have um, uh, and uh, so that's why we also encourage you uh, to, uh, to share your thoughts and questions uh, in the chat. Um, that's um, it's very important feedback um, that help us also to improve and to get back to you with uh, tools and uh, additional elements that really can, can help and fit to your needs. needs. So, um, that's it for my part. Um, I will uh, leave the word to, to Tana uh, and uh, I wish you a very nice um, workshop. Hello everyone, my name is Tana Rademakers and I'm a junior project manager at Interact AMR. And today I will guide you first through the agenda uh, we first start with um, EU requirements and recommendations. Uh, and then uh, at 2 o'clock we will have a 10 minutes break. 
After the 10 minutes break, we will continue with the testimonial and contacts. And then uh, around three, we will end with a Q&A. But as Jean-Philippe already mentioned, do not hesitate to already post your questions in the chat if you have any questions in the meantime. Uh, but let me start first with the communication requirements from the European Union. As you probably already know, you as a project have to follow certain EU rules. As a short reminder, I will go through the obligations and then see how we can communicate these in the best way to fulfill our legal requirements. Now, first of all, always display the EU support, uh, always display the EU support uh, on all communication activities of the project. So this means that we need to see the Interact branding on all communication activities. Um, also, uh, be aware that when using our program logo, you use the right one, the Interact Euregio Meusrein logo with the EU emblem um, in the correct size. And then the correct size is when the EU flag has as least, the, is as, least as big as any other logo, either in height or length. Uh, as an example, you can see e-test. Uh, you can see here that the uh, European flag is the same uh, height as the project logo. Uh, then uh, we'll continue with the next subject as well. The project is underway. EU regulations require you to uh, come up with some essential communication products. Uh, first of all, if you have a website, you're obliged to have a catchy description on your website, which is also highlighting the EU support. Uh, secondly, you are obliged to have a poster of at least A3 size with relevant information about your project. And it's also important that this includes the financial support of the European Union and that it is placed on a visible spot to the public. So not somewhere in the back of your office where nobody comes, but where it, where it is visible to the public. Uh, also, if the cost exceeds 500,000 euro and it involves the purchase of a physical object or the financing of infrastructure or uh, construction operations, please place uh, a temporary billboard of proportionate size in a visible uh, spot. Here you can see one, an example of our project lives. They have placed a billboard. Uh, and after the project uh, is completed, you then also have to put a permanent plaque or billboard of proportional size at the location clearly visible to the public. Also make sure that the name and the objective of the project and the interact branding are stated in your billboard. Uh, we also uh, expect uh, that uh, you organize two major events, and that is usually a kickoff and a final event. Then we go to the next part, and Isabel will tell you more about the communication recomm recommendations. Thank you, Tanner, uh, for that. I will continue now with the communication recommendations. Um, but and not only recommendations, but we've also created some templates, which I will uh, show you in a minute. Um, so, uh, first of all, uh, the colors uh, in our uh, branding, in our new branding, we have focused on the colors of the EU flag. So you see here the blue, of course, uh, but then also a light blue and a yellow. Um, but uh, apart from that, we also included colors for the project, so for research and innovation projects, the yellow, for economic projects, this uh, blue, then for uh, more social pro projects, the pink, and for projects on territorial cohesion, we use this turquoise. Um, and that means then that your project communication will be coherent and in one main color. Uh, so that if uh, citizens um, see your communication, they can uh, identify it as something that you're doing. Um, 
And uh, further on, we also decided in the branding to go for a slanted banner, um, again, to streamline your communication and to have the same uh, look and feel in everything. Uh, for the fonts, uh, we use Open uh, Sans uh, fonts in different versions, depending on uh, what it is, a heading or uh, normal text. And alternatively, uh, you can also use the uh, full corn uh, font, of course, not to be um, confused with the bread, um, but full corn is not only an alternative uh, in the bakery. Um, and uh, from there, we started working on the templates. As I mentioned, there are three different categories of the communication templates the mandatory communication products, but then also optional communication products, and uh, of course for each project also individual communication products that you will then uh, look at more. Let's start with the mandatory uh, communication products first off. As Tanya described, uh, you have to uh, think of our logo, so um, to always correctly include the Interact logo on your communication. And please then also note that all of the elements in the logo are fixed and must be used uh, accordingly. So something like this would not uh, comply with the rules. And uh, similarly um, to that, also this would not comply with the rules because it's differently arranged. Uh, the composition is different. And to make things then easier for our projects, we have started offering combined logos to you. Um, some of you might already use uh, this combined logo. Here we see an example of uh, one of our projects, Akoma, uh, that decided to use this combined logo. Then it's a little bit easier to deal um, with the situation with the Interact logo. Um, we have also updated our call message. You will find it back into, uh, in the guide uh, that I will also send uh, to all of you after this webinar. Uh, so it says, at Interact you read to Ms. Ryan, we fund projects where partners work together across borders and our projects develop shared solutions for common challenges. Uh, as I said, you will find a little bit more uh, on that uh, back in the guide. And please remember to uh, just also take this message uh, with you in your communication. And then uh, let's look at some concrete examples of the templates. First up, the project poster, with, uh, which some of you might already use. Uh, here we have the slider in uh, the, or the slanted banner in uh, the very top. Um, this is also how you will choose your template because uh, according to your um, topic, to your priority axis, you will choose uh, the coloring. Uh, then next to it, we have the combined logo. In this case, it's uh, an example from Digit SME. Uh, if you are not using the combined logo, this would be your own logo next to the Interact logo. Uh, then we have the project picture, which you can adjust, um, and the text about the project. Uh, and then uh, some uh, elements that cannot be adjusted, uh, the reference to our website, the Interact website, and some information about Interact that includes the core message that I just mentioned. And uh, these templates are available in InDesign as well as in a Word version. Uh, the very best option is to use the InDesign template uh, as, of course, this program is in fact made for graphic design like this. Um, but if you do not have the software or uh, yeah, uh, you cannot uh, use it, then it might uh, also be good to have the word version, that is why we translated it into it. And I forgot to mention at the very, to uh, at the very bottom, uh, of course, last but not least, uh, the logos of the co-financers as well as the uh, logos of the project partners. Um, now here is the example for the project billboard uh, template that works uh, very similarly. As Tana mentioned, this is something that you have to think about. 
if uh, your project is um, spending uh, money on infrastructure and you receive more than 500,000 uh, euro of public funding. Um, and in general, this um, billboard, billboard works exactly the same as the uh, project poster, but due to the size, this template uh, would not make sense in Word, so we uh, will provide you with an InDesign version. If you do not have InDesign as a project uh, or you cannot handle the uh, application, uh, then we would recommend to um, hire an external expert on that. We also um, developed a simple landing page uh, with some uh, yeah, very simple information uh, about projects. Uh, and uh, this means that uh, you can put this information online without too much work. Uh, of course, you can then also uh, decide to extend uh, this information and uh, at the moment this is available as an InDesign template. And then uh, we have also the visual final report. This is a sort of infographic that uh, you need to draw up at the end of your project cycle. Some of you might have already been contacted concerning this. Uh, it is a synthesis of the objectives, deliverables and key milestones of uh, your project and then can be distributed, for example, uh, through social media or used in your own uh, communication. And um, we strongly recommend to also allow sufficient time for you to prepare this uh, final reward, report. Uh, ideally, uh, you will finalize it before the closing event takes place. And then you can also use it um, to highlight uh, your achievements and uh, to, to uh, invite people to your event or to make them curious about uh, your event. This is an example we um, made for our project EMR Adi. Uh, and uh, your uh, project report will, of course, look slightly different, but the main elements stay the same. So we have the slanted banner again. In this case, it was an innovative project. That's why it's yellow here. Below, uh, you need to summarize your project in a very short quote. Uh, then in the mind map, uh, you can give some highlights of your project. Um, think of it as a sort of highlight reel. Then in the box below that, in the yellow one that you see at the moment, uh, you can mention the ambitions of your project. So what did you set out to actually do? Um, and then uh, we have some uh, main objectives and uh, some milestones. Uh, as well as, of course, the um, logos of the project partners. And um, this was basically developed to also help you uh, reach citizens uh, with uh, all of the great things that you are doing. And then um, we also need to see at least uh, two communication actions from you. So most of the time that's a kickoff event as well as a closing conference. Of course, today it is very difficult to discuss all kinds of events um, as every event is slightly different. But regardless of the type of event, um, you need to prepare them with a precise objective in your mind. So we recommend uh, to ask yourself beforehand, what objective do I want to achieve? Which is my target group? And we will talk about target groups uh, a bit uh, later. And uh, what, is it, what is the most effective uh, and efficient way to address this target group? And then from there, you can create an actual coherent action plan. Um, and uh, what's also important from our side is that uh, these events are not only interesting for experts that you might reach in any case or um, st stakeholders that you are in discussion with in any case, but, it is, uh, but that it is accessible for the general public. 
So try to present the uh, project in an interesting and in a tangible way. Um, to give you an example, if uh, you as a project are, um, are working on uh, environmental issues, maybe it's an interesting idea to have the event outside uh, so that you can also illustrate the environmental uh, challenges that you want to address. And uh, yeah, in that sense, really think about your storytelling um, as an event is just a great moment to, to gather people and to tell your story. And for uh, these uh, communication actions, um, we uh, also have a lot of input that you can find in the guideline. Uh, so uh, do not uh, miss that. I will send it to you, as I said, after the event. Um, then we also have some optional communication products that you might want to uh, use. Uh, for example, PowerPoint uh, template. Um, this example comes again from an exercise we've done with Digit SME. And uh, your templates will, of course, be adjusted depending on the color of your priority axis, um, as with any other template as well. Um, and there are different kind of slides that you can use. This title slide, um, think as well about the fact that uh, here you can see the same picture as uh, you can see in other communication uh, from this project. So that is very good to streamline it like that. Uh, so that people can really uh, have um, an association with your project. Then we also have some um, picture slides, but also text slides, of course, as well as um, slides with some bullet points. And um, apart from a PowerPoint, you might also want to um, display some of the information, some of the project information on screens. Uh, if you want to use uh, screens in your offices or if you want to use them to present some key information on a fair, uh, etc., this uh, might be handy. Um, here it is important to keep in mind to uh, not uh, to rotate them too quickly so that you can still read it, of course, but um, these uh, templates you will also receive. Then we were also working on a digital newsletter. Um, the newsletter, again, follows the same design method. Uh, so you can find the slanted banner rack, but also the project photo and the color of the priority axis. And uh, you will get this design in an InDesign and a PDF document. And we're currently looking into uh, translating it also into an HTML uh, option. Uh, I will get back to you uh, on that if that's possible or not. And then we also have an email banner. Let's say you don't want to send out a newsletter as such, uh, but you just want to send out a normal email. It is good to also brand that. Um, and uh, here you have the option to also indicate uh, that you're working for uh, your project and what you're doing actually um, together with your project partners. Uh, apart from that, we think it is also very good to work with a very visual uh, way. So we also thought about project videos. How can we help you uh, create nice project videos? Because Communication is becoming more and more uh, visual and faster also um, uh, in the last couple of years. So um, we decided to also work on some recommendations for that. Um, and to make the most of it, uh, we recommend to, of course, uh, look at an external contractor and to work with them they will make the most out of the template and also out of the story you want to tell. Uh, videos are always still made in 16 to 9 format, as you can see here. Uh, we would recommend to again use the main colors, uh, submit, supplement it with the project color, and to put a white logo as a watermark in the uh, top right corner. 
Um, in this case, it was the combined logo. Otherwise, you could also think of putting the Interact logo next to your own logo. And uh, to make it a bit more interactive, uh, we are also working with these uh, ob oblique uh, planes um, that uh, include the project uh, color, something like that. And um, we suggest that uh, when you want to subtitle uh, your video to use a white band at the very bottom of the image, uh, like this. Um, and yeah, of course, due to the different languages in our program, most of the time it is useful to subtitle uh, your video as well. And uh, finally, to introduce the uh, logos of your project partners, but also the co-financers at the end of the video, we recommend to uh, go for this option and then to display uh, your um, funding from Interreg in this manner. Then we also looked at flyers uh, and folders. Um, they are in a way very similar to a project uh, video as they can make your work more tangible and they can be, for example, distributed to, through events uh, or sent to important stakeholders. And the flyer that you see here is a more classical design for one-time events uh, with a front that you can see and a back with some project information. Alternatively, if you don't want to use a flyer or you don't have an event you want to uh, create a communication material for, uh, we also have this example for folder. Uh, this leaflet is foldable and uh, has some more space for information and is therefore a bit better suited for content or project information that has a longer shelf life. So here you can see it fully opened. And these templates, uh, the flyer as well as the folder, are available in Word as well as in InDesign. Again, we would recommend to work with InDesign. And if you cannot do it yourself, then you can also pay an expert to do that. Um, but the Word option is there. And then we have a roll-up. This, again, due to the size, makes no sense in, in Word. So that's why we chose an InDesign uh, template. And finally, some individual communication products. Uh, these are products that uh, can be developed on your own initiative. In principle, there are no restrictions here, of course. Um, but you have to keep the house style uh, and the EU regulations in mind. Um, examples that you might think of uh, are social media channels, advertisements, workshops, newsletters, etc. And then we strongly uh, just recommend that you keep um, the style of the other templates in mind and mirror some of the elements that I presented to you in the beginning so that you can, um, you can also uh, keep a, a well-rounded communication on your side. And now I've sp spoken for a long time, so I think it is time for a break. We will be back in 10 minutes. So welcome back. Um, we were, of course, also curious to hear from some of our projects uh, with whom we developed uh, the templates that you've just uh, looked at. So we asked them for their experiences with the project communication in general and then also the templates. So let's see what they have to say and what uh, recommendations they have for us. Uh, first up, we will hear from Jill from Your Friends.
you for that, and uh, thank you particularly to the uh, two projects, your friends and Digit SME, uh, to share their experiences. Now it's time to talk all about some contacts, and uh, the first topic we will talk about in this uh, part is uh, target groups. Uh, as the projects just uh, pointed out in their testimonials, it's very important to think about uh, which communication tools you use uh, to reach your target groups and um, that you also think about using different communication channels to reach different uh, kinds of target groups. Um, that's also why we wanted to provide a lot of tips and tricks in our guide for that and uh, some examples as well of how you can plan uh, for that. Uh, how you can plan which cluster of target groups or stakeholders uh, you reach through which uh, communication uh, tool. Uh, of course, you might think about influencing public opinion of the inhabitants in our region, but then also political actors and policy makers, uh, stakeholders in and outside of your project, uh, national and regional authorities, and finally, also EU institutions. Um, so, as you can see from only that short list, that might be uh, very different kinds of people that um, you want to reach. Um, and to reach them, uh, we strongly recommend to then prepare a concise uh, communication matrix uh, every year. Um, here, an example for that. Uh, that we thought of. Um, so to, to come to this uh, conclusion in the end, you have to, to ask yourself uh, what are uh, the objectives of the project um, per target group, which actions are we going to take, and when do we achieve um, the objective, and uh, finally also what resources are needed uh, for this and what is the exact timing. Um, obviously several uh, communication campaigns are suitable for several types of target groups. You can see that here as well. Um, it doesn't mean that um, because we reach the public through a banner uh, they aren't interested in a poster for example. But um, uh, that is a bit also uh, individual up to the um, project to decide. But here you can already have a good idea about it. And then uh, last but not least, we also wanted to talk about how do we go further? Uh, what are the contacts that uh, you have in the program? So uh, you, of course, have the regional antennas uh, which you can reach. Um, they are your first most likely uh, point of contact and they are the ones that uh, will do also the first visibility check on your project. They are there to uh, answer your questions on communication of uh, regional co-financing and can help you with uh, regional representatives for your event. Um, but they can also answer basic questions about your communication and the visibility rules of the program. So think of it as an explanation of the communication guide you will uh, receive. And um, they are also helpful if you, uh, for example, can't use InDesign or you want to do a, a video uh, and you're not so sure about the exact procurement procedure at regional level, they can help you with that. Then we have the project managers. Um, we've earlier seen one of our colleagues uh, who is a project manager, Tane. Um, they are there for the second visibility check, but of course, uh, first and foremost, also uh, for general questions on project implementation, and then that also includes communication. So again, uh, they would be um, also there to explain something uh, that's already in the communication guide uh, that you will receive. And um, if you need to have a speaker from our side for one of your events, then they are also there to, to facilitate that. 
And then finally, there's the communication uh, officer, um, which would be me in this case. I do the third uh, visibility check. Um, I'm also there if you have a finalized design and you need uh, to have a check because you're not quite sure if it's uh, following the rules that we explained in the very beginning of this event. Um, please, in this case, also think about the fact that um, you leave a little bit of time for that because uh, sometimes I'm busy with something else, the um, communication on the program side, and then I can't answer immediately. And I'm also there if you have more complex questions uh, on communication. So that would be questions that aren't included in the communication guide, for example. Or if you are wondering about some strategy on your side for communication, uh, then I'm happy to help you with that as well, as far as I can. And now it's uh, time to answer some of your questions. Don't forget, you can ask questions uh, through the chat. But we've also received already um, some questions beforehand. The first one is, I would like to ask other communication managers if they get consistent results using digital communication when working for EMR projects. And for that, we've uh, provided uh, or prepared uh, uh, two polls. Um, so we will launch those now. We are very curious about your um, results, of course. So uh, instead of answering right away, we would like to ask you that question. Um, the first one uh, we have thought of would be, um, do you see a difference between the different um, parts in the year? And we have some slight technical issues because I can't see the results at the moment. But if you see it on your screen right now, then just uh, go ahead and answer. Yes, now I, I see it perfect. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, the, the questions would be, if there are different results according to the time of year. And um, we're very curious about your uh, experiences. I will leave some time for you to answer. Please log in if you see a pattern uh, or if you do see differences, but not in a, a concrete pattern. So it's not that you can say every spring we see more interaction in, in our communication, for example. Or alternatively, yeah. You don't have consistent results. That's also a possibility. And we have some results. OK, so we see 20% uh, sees a pattern looking at their communication. Uh, then the same amount does see differences, but no pattern. Uh, then 30% has no consistent uh, results throughout the year. Oh, no, uh, sorry, 30% has consistent results. And then finally, 30% doesn't um, monitor uh, the communication results. It's very interesting. I uh, have to say that uh, from my point of view, uh, oftentimes, I can see a pattern that, um, yeah, uh, throughout the summer, it's a little bit less of interaction in our communication. Most people are on holiday and uh, might not check um, social media or uh, just think of something else uh, with the lovely sun out. So uh, that's quite interesting that um, we see such a varied uh, result there. Um, we've also prepared a second poll. 
And the second question is, do you see a difference uh, in your communication results depending on the time that you post? Uh, so that would be the time in the day. Uh, do you see a difference if you post it in the morning versus the evening? Um, do you see uh, more interaction uh, at a specific time? Or maybe you also haven't noticed any differences or you do not look at that, um, how, how does that uh, pan out? And again, we will leave some time for you to answer. Please log in your, your idea, what do you think? for your project. And we see most people actually answer that they have identified some optional, optimal times to post. Um, and then followed by uh, the answer of, yes, we do see a difference, but we're trying uh, to still figure out uh, the perfect time to post, as well as we do not monitor uh, that sort of result. Uh, I would suggest, yeah, um, that it is for sure uh, both of these things are, are good to think about. Um, and I would suggest that it's uh, certainly depending on the different target groups that you need to, to reach. Uh, depending on that, it might be um, interesting to post at a certain time. Uh, it will be different uh, trying to reach uh, someone who is working uh, and um, in comparison to someone who is at home the whole day or uh, alternatively, uh, yeah, um, think about trying to reach students versus people who are working. Um, that will be uh, very different. So thank you everyone uh, for your interaction here. Uh, then we will go to the second question that we already received before uh, this session. Uh, that question was, will there be an opportunity to exchange knowledge or to get in touch with fe fellow communication professionals? At the moment, uh, that's a bit difficult uh, technically, um, but I would like to suggest uh, to share also the contacts of all of the participants today. Um, if you do object, please uh, let me know by email or by writing it now into uh, the chat. Otherwise. Uh, I uh, think it would be a really great option uh, to share the contacts between the different communication officers and um, to stay in contact as well. Sometimes one of your colleagues might have a great idea or a, a great solution for one of the uh, shared issues you run into and uh, it might even be interesting in the future to work together in a communication action in an event. So um, that would be my uh, suggestion. And uh, again, if you do not wish to do that, please indicate it via email or in the chat. And for that, I'm uh, at the moment done with the prepared questions, but I do not know if there have been any further questions. I see my colleague is nodding no. Um, so we uh, slowly come to the end of uh, this event. If there are still questions afterwards, uh, you can always reach us, uh, as we said, uh, through the different contact points and via email or telephone. And uh, with that, I would like to uh, thank from my side everyone, and I give uh, the floor to Jean-Philippe. Yes, uh, here I'm again to, uh, to close uh, this uh, workshop. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, I first of all want to thank you for um, having uh, followed the workshop, to have also uh, participated uh, in that. And uh, yeah, we really hope uh, it was uh, helpful uh, to you uh, with these um, new tools, these tips and tricks and uh, testimonials. Um, this is also was for us the opportunity to introduce also the new style that we will use uh, for the communication uh, around the program and uh, um, it will be used uh, for, for the end of the current period and also um, for the next period as you know that we are fully preparing and uh, we certainly will get back to you um, about also uh, uh, new um, steps and additional uh, things to know uh, with regard to this new period uh, when the time is there and, and um, we are all ready for that. So um, yeah, again, we hope it was it was helpful to you. Um, as Isabel said, uh, do not hesitate to get back to us um, uh, even after um, the, the workshop and also in your daily work. Um, like I said uh, in the beginning, it's important that we receive the feedback and uh, so that we, we can work on that and also really guide you and help you uh, through, through these uh, important steps also for you and uh, as you know uh, Interact stands for cooperation and uh, of course uh, to be successful cooperation needs to be done at all levels and also um, and also all stakeholders so uh, this is really important that we stay in touch um, really now to close I want to, to, to thank you uh, to thank, sorry, <laughs> um, Isabel for having prepared uh, all this very well. Uh, Tana also for uh, having helped us uh, in, in this presentation. Caroline and Jeff for uh, the technical parts uh, and, and having run this very uh, smoothly. And all the people that are involved uh, in the preparation of today, but also uh, are involved in uh, the implementation on a daily basis. So um, that was it for us. Um, do not hesitate to spread uh, the links. Uh, as it was said, it is available and will be available on our website. Uh, really consult uh, these, uh, the tools and um, yeah, hopefully see you uh, very soon at another opportunity. Goodbye. <laughs>